Hey guys, Casey with Sea Reeves Mates here. In today's video, I'm going to cover the tool holders that I've made for the French cleat walls and kind of go over my quick and easy process for putting them together using nothing but scrap wood and some glue. One thing I like about the tool holders is the versatility to be able to move them around. So again, I've just built all these based on the scrap wood that I had available and kind of my needs and how I saw the fit that I wanted for this wall. Today, I need to make a holder for my brad nailer and my pinner. I start by laying out the tools on the scrap plywood in a fashion that fits the look that I am going for. I then use a square to quickly set and mark the overall size of the back panel. This will be cut later. Next I take some small blocks roughly 2 inches wide and set them within the tools where I think that they will provide the best support. After I get an idea of location, I mark the blocks where the excess needs to be trimmed off. And after trimming the blocks, I use a pencil to mark the locations on the back of the panel. I then use a marker to darken the lines so I know where they will go. The dots in the middle of the zone represent where I need to drill later for screws. Using my crosscut sled, I quickly bring this panel to the desired length. If you do not have a crosscut sled, I highly recommend that you build one. They are a lifesaver and make small jobs like these tool holders a blast. After cutting to size at the table saw, I used my trim router to put a slight round over on the face side of the panel and then I flipped it over. Using a palm sander, I break all of the rough edges so they're nice and smooth. I then pre-drilled the holes where the marked dots were, but unfortunately I forgot to hit the record button. And now this is where the fun begins. Have you ever used super glue on a woodworking project? It is a game changer. In this case, using the marks that I made for the block locations, I add Starbond adhesive to that area and then use Starbond accelerator to spray the blocks. Spray the back of the block and then you simply set the block into place and press it down. You now have an instant and secure bond. Flip the panel over and pre-drill and countersink the blocks from the back side. This will prevent the block from splitting and allow the screws to sit flush with the back of the panel. Now insert your screws. The last item is the cleat itself. Using a piece of leftover cleat, I mark the length and cut it to size. It's usually about one inch shorter than the panel itself. The cleats are roughly two and a half inches wide and cut at a 45 degree angle on one side. I usually hold the tool holder up to the cleat wall to see where I'd like it to sit. I then mark a line on the side at the top of the cleat. Then using a speed square, I transfer that line down the back of the panel. Apply some wood glue to the back of the cleat, but leave a few zones open. Now apply some more Starbond to those areas and this will help seat the cleat onto the back of the panel. Spray accelerator onto the back panel and then line up the cleat to the reference mark that you made earlier. Press and hold and now the cleat is secure. If you are interested in trying out some Starbond adhesive, I have added a referral link in the description below. You are supporting my channel and what I do by purchasing through that link and for that I thank you. Once the glue is all set, install some brad nails through the cleat into the back panel for good measure. Now your tool holder is done. This method will work with almost all of the tools you could want to hang on your wall. Some of my holders have larger shelf-like platforms on the bottom and those are simply glued and screwed into place and I have added gussets for extra support.
a lot of comments asking questions about the tool holders and if I have plans for them. I really don't have plans for each tool holder. It would be a, a major undertaking to draw up a plan set for each specific tool holder and it's really just based on my design and it's also kind of restricted or fit to the scrap wood that I had available when I built the tool holders. So I've kind of just told people that um, if you watch the videos, you can kind of get an understanding of what the tool holder is and what it's doing. That's the process, that's how I do it. Any questions, again, please ask. I'm Casey with C. Reeves Makes, and thanks for watching.